Hey guys, AJ here from Hollow Nut Marauders for Hollowcade episode number two. Today we're covering Shadows of the Empire, a classic for the N64 and the PC. We recorded this video back in September, early September, for our patrons on Patreon. But now, now that we have the Hollowcade series out, we're putting it on here, so please enjoy. We had a life-changing experience over the weekend. Oh, yeah. As we tend and to do and when I'm we not, get together for expos. I'm not talking about our panel that we did. Uh, I know. That by the time this comes out, you guys will have seen and whatnot. And it was a really fun time. That was like... That was a blast. Oh, my, the, the past couple of years have just been overall awful for everything and everybody. But we've had good times, obviously. But that was like that was so nice to go do that. And, oh, yeah. Um, that was a highlight. I, I hope say. to do that again someday. It's like George and Seinfeld. I enjoy it. I remember it's a good thing. I hope to do it again one day. There you and go. That, he's talking about sex, but here we're talking about panels. So, speaking of no, I'm not gonna make that. Tra I'm not making that transition. But <laughs> when we were at the convention, um, uh, before I saw Matt, the day of uh, Jamie and I did a troop for the the base uh, at the Rebel Legion 501st tent, and. Uh, I went over to, you know, they sell stuff at the booths and whatnot. I went over and I found N64 games. And for a while, I've been meaning to go on eBay and buy something, but I can skip the middleman, go right to the booth and and buy the thing there. So I sent a picture of Matt and I was like, should I get Shadows of the Empire or Rogue Squadron, the original um, on N64? And he was like, don't make me choose. Um, you know, choose. just get both. And yeah. he, he Venmoed me 10 bucks. It was 10 bucks on eBay. These, are, these games are like 20 bucks each. So, um, a steal here it is and it says that 10 bucks on it so yeah so um keeping that on there we we got home later that day and our our good friend slash producer shelby came over uh we picked her up from the train and later we started playing n64 video games we started with rogue squadron we didn't i didn't really get into it for some reason matt makes me play them and he likes to watch but <laughs> i make you play them well you don't make me but it, it, ever since the I Phantom Menace video game. You know what? This is going to be a series of things. Matt and I talk about old Star Wars video games we play, and maybe all video games, but we'll see. Um, but we're, we're talking about Shadows of the Empire today. We popped yeah, we Shadows of the Empire in eventually that night, and that just was like boom. the, the like vibe of the whole clicked. weekend. We went right back to the 90s, and it's funny because as a kid, I did play Shadows of the Empire. Um, I briefly had an N64, and that's a whole other story for a little bit. My brother and I had one. And uh, I played it, and I remember playing it at a friend's houses, but I don't like recall anything. And I was very young; I was what, yeah. like four or five years old when it came out, I guess. Um, so I don't remember anything. I remember the sewers. <laughs> I don't know why I remember that. I just remember the gushing crap going down the the Coruscant Coruscant it's sewers. Good, that, good, you remember that part of the game, the gushing crap. Right, and then uh, it, we were playing it with fresh eyes. I remember the Hoth level too, because who forgets the Hoth level? Yeah, the Hoth level Hoth. is like the iconic part of the game, which is funny because it's like not even like it's not even exclusive to the game. It's literally just an adaptation of the scene from the movie. Right, and it's not even like you know you get to Ord Mantell later, and then it literally has like no bearing on the game whatsoever. I was actually watching an interview yesterday with one of the game's developers, and he was like, "The first thing we wanted to do was just put." The hoth level in because we wanted people to experience hoth so we came up with this like convoluted story of why you know dash rendar was on hoth uh you know he climbs into a speeder and helps out the rebels as he's delivering food or in the game it's delivering arms there's like these weird inconsistencies between the book slash comic and the game that are that just like right. blow my mind i don't know why these like details didn't like nobody coordinated those details but whatever and they literally That's just was like oh let's just let's just do uh you know, the Battle of Hoth, because I, I know people are going to want to play that. So they did. Right. And uh, I don't know. Like, it's funny. You you talking about you were looking stuff up. Like, we're we're obsessed with Shadows of the Empire right Dude, now for totally. some reason. It's Shadows and I don't of the know, Empire. Oh, my God. I've it's never just... been attached to, like, a Legends thing. And I wouldn't say this is being attached to it. I just, we had a good experience doing this, because it was yeah. kind of the first time you and I have gone through this game. And we still haven't finished it, by the way. We're at the very end. We'll get to that later. Um <laughs> 
so much frustration in this game. Oh my god. Well, yeah, we'll get into why we're not finished with it later on, but but the just the music and the vibe of it, and it's, you know, you you talked about the '90s feel of it. Yeah, I can't stress this enough. '90s Star Wars is such a vibe, like it's such a feeling. There's something about, like it, it's almost like it, not in innocence, but like it just it's a simpler time, if you will, when Star Wars was literally just the original trilogy, when Star Wars was Luke, Leia, Han, Chewie, you know, Vader, and that's it. There was no prequels. There were no sequels. There was no, you know, Old Republic. There was nothing. It was literally just the the original trilogy and, you know, the stuff that comes afterwards, five years afterwards, six years afterwards. So it was that, like, span of time. Um, and I just love how just, I don't know, quaint, I guess is the right word for it. Just quaint everything is, you know. They built this this entire, like, well, I'll get into the multimedia aspect of it um, later when we when we actually dive into it. But the '90s Star Wars just feels cool. It yeah. just has this like nostalgic vibe to it that you know. If you look at just all you need to do to understand what I what I'm trying to say, all you need to do is go on Wikipedia and look at the picture they have for Dash Rendar. Yeah, just look at that boy and tell me exactly how you feel because it's going to be the same it we're all we're all going to feel the same vibe we're all going to connect as soon as you look at that picture it's just so mm. and playing playing the n64 version i think is like there's the n64 version um our background here says only for n64 in the corner and uh that's not true because it was out for the pc was it the same time or shortly after they adapted it like a year later for the pc and they put like these like uh yeah, the cutscenes. Cutscenes in it, which aren't but in the game. I prefer the old Lucasfilm, Lucas Art style, like still image cutscenes. Yeah. Um, yeah, me too. With and that's like a classic Nintendo thing of having just like dialogue with no voiceover. Um, like a ton of Nintendo games do it, so it was cool for that. And and Matt was, you know, my co-pilot literally because he was I was Dash Rendar and he was Lebo. That's right. And he he was reading all the lines for everyone and doing different voices. So it was so smart, dude. Mark Thompson, uh, you better watch out out there. Yeah, eat your heart out, dude. I'm I'm coming for your job. And then we watched the we we had to look up some walkthroughs for a lot of reasons later, and it was the PC version, and we heard the voices, and I was like, no, because Matt's interpretation of uh of Lebo the droid Lebo, was just yeah. uncanny. So, <laughs> sir, please leave. <laughs> sir, please leave. Um, but yeah, the the '90s feel of it. I mean, we're you and I are nostalgic for the '90s, I guess. Uh, yeah. I mean, we are totally. We're '90s kids, even though like we came of age really in like the early 2000s, I guess, right? But I still have memories from the '90s, obviously. Right. I mean, I have a lot of N64 memories. So, I mean, anytime we fire up that N64, it's like it's a trip back, whether it's Golden Eye or whatever we're playing. For Um, sure. But Shadows of the Empire. I mean, I find myself looking at the figures now online. I I want. I'm listening to the soundtrack. I mean, yeah, me too. Yeah. I think that the the heaviest charm for me on Shadows of the Empire is the multimedia project aspect of it. I think that is like the coolest, cleverest thing. And they never did it again. They did. Uh, They did. We're we're on the cusp of of greatness with it now. But I'm talking about the truest form of multimedia where they did a novel, a comic, a video game, and then a soundtrack. Yeah. They sat somebody down and like make, make music for this book. And this guy was like, (laughs) uh, And apparently he held, he only had two weeks to make the soundtrack. They get, he had like a two week window in his schedule and he sat down. He's like, fine, I'll do it. And he, and he pumped out like this masterpiece. I'm loving it. Like it's so cool. And no other multimedia project has done that. And that's what no. I mean. I think the soundtrack I think the, adds like 10 times more charm to the, to the, it does the empire. The music, I, like I said, over and over the music, uh, really does it for us. And oh, yeah. jokingly, um, our friend Shelby, and I, Jamie might have said it too, but I think Jamie likes the music. But uh, it's like, oh, like you just listen to that music on a loop over and over, and then you and I are like later Dude, that day looking up on YouTube just to like, listen just to it all day. Driving in the car, and we're like, all right, let's let's put it I on. Can't get enough. Honestly, it, it's it's addicting. I mean, you know, obviously the video game loops the music, so you know, it was only little <laughs> like chunks of the overall soundtrack. Um, but it's just. Like they they did the Clone Wars multimedia project, they did the Force Unleashed. Now they're doing the High Republic, and all of those are great too. But they don't have the soundtrack. And so Lucasfilm, if you're listening, and I know you are, because you're 
you're sub you're subscribed to our Patreon, so you're getting yep, this, yep. this extra content. <laughs> um, make a High Republic soundtrack, please. They have to come on. Like we're we're already like two. We're already two phases into wave one. No, sorry, two waves into phase one of yep. a three phase project, and I you know. I can only hear so much prequel music in these audiobooks. Like, I love it. It's perfect. And it's literally all Phantom Menace music. They only use, like, Phantom Menace music. Um, I wish we... I, if I had one question <laughs> to ask the... Uh, I don't, whoever's in charge of doing the audiobooks for, for Lucasfilm and whatnot, I, or Lucasfilm Press, whatever it is, um, why do they choose the episode one music? I don't get it. I think it's because it's the closest in time period to the High Republic. But I... There's like they, a murky. They, they also did it with Resistance Reborn too. Oh yeah, that's true. And so that's I don't know. <laughs> I don't get it. But I don't know. But whatever yeah. the case is, sit somebody down. Yeah, it could be the same guy. What's his get name? Get the Kiner Brothers, or get this guy. Yeah, get someone. Kiner Brothers. That would be great. Wow, that'd be a great idea. If it's one one thing Star Wars is consistently good at that everyone can agree on, it's music. they get good. Yeah, they get good people to do all the music yeah. for everything. So. They've nailed it so far in the music department. The Kinder Brothers, John Williams, uh, you know, Ludwig Lorenson. Yep. Whoever Michael did G Fallen Order. Jack and uh, O. Oh, what's his name? Jack and O, yep. Um, I and forget. Then, uh, is it jo Joseph Powell? He did uh, the music for Solo? I think so. I believe. Yep. Nope. John Powell. John Powell. Okay. Our apologies. Our apologies, John Powell. Stephen Barton. Stephen Barton did the music and for... And Gordy Hab. They did. did Fallen Order. It's great music in Fallen Order too. Yeah, you know? oh, it's fantastic. But getting back to getting back to where we we were on yeah. uh, Shadows of the Empire. Uh God. Let's get into the gameplay of it right now. So, yeah, we we started on Hoth. It was beautiful, well lit. That's yep. important. This yeah. game's called Shadows of the Empire for a reason. Holy and, crap! Uh, if you're playing on a modern TV, it is good luck. Three fourths of the game is shadows. And then the other fourth is of the empire, but three fourths is shadows. <laughs> we could right. not, we couldn't see a, a damn thing. For yeah, once you get to the, the game, the first half of the game is like all bright levels for the most part. When you go in buildings, it gets dark and it's annoying. But we got to the sewers, oh my God. the sewers of Coruscant to get into uh, Zizer's palace or she's Shizar's. People she's say, ours. I've heard like five different people say she's or, but come on, guys. X. When does X make a S? Apparently sound? in Star Wars, because there's also the the Shar system, the Jar but, system in the game. But that was Z, yeah. Well, wasn't I? Don't know how they pronounced it. Anyways, uh, the sewers, of course, the, the sewers. sewers. All we could see was crap. Literally, this is, and as I mentioned earlier, from my childhood, the flowing crap. No wonder I. That's all I mentioned because that's all I could see in the game, dude. But I had to use my. Thank goodness you can't run out of blaster fire. Yeah. It's just kind of like it, it never runs out. It's just kind of recharged the whole time. Um, but I had to shoot my way. We're, we're looking at darkness. Shelby and Jamie think we're crazy. They're walking. They're doing their separate projects. Like, what are these guys? They're just looking at a TV, listening to music, like a blank screen. Um, I'm firing my blaster to see like where the walls are. It's yeah. ridiculous. We we joked that we were um, Churit. Uh, Churit. Uh, I was a Churit Nebula. Churit Nebula. I was thinking Crash Nebula. Crash wow. Nebula. <laughs> Dude, Dash Rendar is Crash Nebula. He is like Crash 100%. Nebula. He's oh literally God. Crash Crash Rendar. Crash Rendar. <laughs> <laughs> he is. Oh, that's really good. But yeah, I'd I'd use my freaking blaster to Dude, literally, find my way. It's if you if you were to be in the room with us watching us play, literally the entire game was just like that. Yep, it was that just, with the health with bar. With like in the somebody corner. blasting, <laughs> like blasting the the walls as we like walked along. It was it great. Was great. Though. It, it was, was great when someone when someone shot me. It'd be great because the whole screen would whole light screen up and I could see for oh, a wow. second. And, and it's the uh, funniest thing because we were having a blast. I, <laughs> I don't, we're sitting I, there. It's, it was the, the music. The screen is pitch black, and we're going, "Wow, this is awesome!" The music and Lebo. That's what. Yeah. And the creepiness. This this game is like this game is very like the whole Shadows of the Empire atmosphere is incredibly like. Oh, well, Prince Caesar is very creepy. I mean, look at the look at the box. He's just peeking. Yeah. It, it, when I was little, I think I always thought it was Palpatine because he's always the one lurking in the back like that, especially yeah. in like the new Rise of Skywalker poster. He, you know, he's always peeking, always in the shadows. That's right. And uh, Prince Caesar is just very creepy and for a lot of reasons. And uh, so is his uh, sewer system yeah. and his palace. 
But fun fact. Yeah. In Empire Strikes Back, when Palpatine calls Vader, uh, Shizor is in the room with him. Like really? just off screen. Yep. On the Imperial City. Yeah. And he and that's when he learns that Luke is the son of Skywalker. And he's like, ooh, Luke Skywalker. I'm gonna Although, take him down. I'm pretty sure in the new Empire, I mean, that's obviously a legends thing. We don't know what yeah. um his like current status is, although he appears in the Phantom Menace. I have a, a radical theory I'll share later. Okay, okay. But, yeah, I was going to go into Empire Strikes Back certain point of view, because I think it shows there's a, sto- a short story about Palpatine uh, contacting Vader. But I don't remember all of it, even though I read it like six yeah. months ago. But anyways, um, and it, it's funny. We got to the, the level we're on now is the second to last level in the game. You go into Zizor's palace, and you, you're supposed to blow up his elevator which like blows up the whole elevator elevator to space, which makes no sense. Like, why is there an elevator all the way to space? And like, apparently in the comic, Lando just throws, I watched Star Wars Explained today talk about it. Good stuff. He throws a, a thermal detonator in the trash and yeah. that blows up the, the elevator. Meanwhile, yeah, like out. in the video game, you're by yourself. There's no Lando yeah. or Chewie or Luke. You're, you're in a, you have a, a freaking jetpack, as the walkthrough calls it, that we looked up. Yeah. Um, and you're wandering around this this shaft, placing mines to blow up and get out of there. And Alex was talking about, you know, he was doing his lore playthrough from like three years ago, mm. which is pretty recent for this game. Um, but he he was like, he's able to see because he's playing on the PC version and whatnot. And he's flying around and he's like, he's like, bear with me here because like I did, it's a ama- this room's a maze and I didn't know where I was going. And I'm like, Alex. I deserve a medal for getting through this room. Yeah, I really on. do. It was try, try playing darkness. the game like we did. Try pl- oh playing God. with a freaking blindfold on. And that was the us. worst because not only could we not see, it was a an elevator shaft. So, you know, we fell like three times and died. And then we got to a freaking with our freaking jetpack. We got to a freaking gladiator. Oh my God, droid, the gladiator droid, which apparently appear again in Clone Wars. They do. Um, yeah, in some droid episode. Hmm. I don't remember what it was called, but uh, I have to look back into that. But <laughs> the droid comes out. It's massive, but it's like, okay, whatever. It's slow. It does a lot. Of, it has a lot of firepower, but I, I kicked its butt the first time. But then its legs are just gone, and you have to fight its floating torso and its head. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, there's no way it's going to be the floating head after, oh right? It, and we're, we're sitting there like it's going to be the head. <laughs> in video games, everything's done in threes. Yeah, it's the rule there's of three. There's always three stages of everything, mm-hmm. usually. Um. That's for everything, not just Although Boba game. Fett was two. That's true. But, which was a really fun little battle with Boba that, Fett. That's legendary. That was legendary. Dash Vendor versus Boba Fett is like one of the like legendary moments in Star Wars, in my opinion. And like one of those up definitely up w- there. With the Gladiator, all I'll say is like we're stuck on the Gladiator. It turns out you do have to get to the head. Yeah. And you have no health and like barely any jetpack fuel left at that point. So and a story for me, another day. Let me stress this enough. We can't see. So, yeah. although <laughs> the problem that, is in that part of the level, you can actually see pretty decently. Right. But the entire level, you can't see. So, all of a sudden, we're like on the final boss, we die, we run out of lives, and we're like, we have to like crawl through the level again because we can't see. That's the worst part. So, I would easily, I would easily do it, but yeah. we just, it's hard we'd to just see through, through the level. If, if we could see through, if we could see the level, we'd play that level like three or four times, like no problem. But because we're literally like, where the hell are we? What are we doing? Half the time, it's literally AJ like moving the analog stick until all of a sudden we see like a glimmer of light and we're like, oh, we made it. But then um, we get to a certain point where we, we replay it so much that it's like wandering to the bathroom at like 2 a.m. in the middle of the night, like yeah. getting out of bed. It's like, oh, in the darkness. Okay, I know where it is. I've done this a hundred times, but um, I don't know. No, I mean, it's, that's, it's that's the exactly worst. it. But it's, it's <laughs> eventually it gets frustrating and demoralizing. And what Absolutely. should be like 10 minutes of us like going through a level turns into like 25, 30 minutes because we can't, can't see. Why did we have so much fun playing this? Because. I, I can't explain it. It's it's just, it. There's so much charm. It's, there yeah. is. There's just an, like an unlimited infinite amount of charm that comes with Shadows of the Empire. I, it's, you know, the, the purple. As you, can, as you can see. The purple. I was the trying purple. to explain the purple to you. I tried to make my background purple too. I think I kind of succeeded. Like when I think of the Last Jedi, I think of red. When I think of you know, when I think of like Episode One, I think of like green because of Naboo and you know, 
I like yeah. I have these like colors that are like saved in my brain that I associate with each story. I think and of Shadows yellow of for some reason, or I think of yellow with blue. Force Awakens. I don't Perfect. know why. Yellow for the Force. Well, I mean, it's the the logo has it, and it's just. Wait, like, did I say Force Awakens? Yeah, I meant Phantom Menace. Phantom Menace. Both okay. of them, I think of yellow. Okay. Yeah. Just because the big gold Phantom Menace, like I mean, Star Wars is always like a gold logo, but I don't know. Yeah. But Shadows of the Empire, it's purple. <laughs> Shadows of the Empire is 100% purple. Yeah. And it's like, again, it's it just feels so concrete. It feels like a story that has some, like, weight to it. Obviously, you know, in this story, we have Luke complete his training and build his lightsaber. We have the first, you know, large-scale attempt of them trying to rescue Han. We have Boba Fett, you know, fighting off bounty hunters and trying to deliver... Han frozen in carbonite and he finally does at the end to Jabba the Hutt and of course we have Shizor trying to usurp Darth Vader um, it, which is a great great plan awesome awesome it's funny, uh, it's funny you're talking about like the whole multimedia project like storyline here yeah but like because like barely any of it's in the game all I've experienced is the game and you don't experience any of that really no, for some really. reason like IG IG88 is supposed to die like blown up by boba fett in the in the, yeah. the comic or the book but apparently and he makes his way to ward, to ward mantel, mantel. <laughs> starts rebuilding his ship and then we kill him so and then apparently in the the book in the novel uh, the novel in the comic you don't even fight boba fett like you, i think yeah. he does later maybe but in the the part where we did he's with lando uh yeah. dash rendar's with lando and they don't even see boba fett he, like, and then dash rendar like leaves as soon as they arrive on gaul dash rendar's like i'm out and he leaves yeah and then, like, in the game, he, like, lands somewhere and is like, all right, time to fight Boba Fett. And then he fights Boba Fett, and then Boba Fett flies away. And all of this is supposed to happen in a time frame that's, like, two minutes in the comic in the book because they, like, fly down, he leaves, and then it's, like, Boba Fett's ship comes up, and they're like, Boba Fett. So it's, like, you know, there, there's some inconsistencies between the game and the rest of the project. But it's, like, honestly, I think the inconsistencies make it a little make it a little more concrete for me as weird as that sounds because it's like it's almost like the game is an adaptation of the yeah. events of shadows of the empire yeah um which is a cool way to think about that um it's almost like oh yeah you know we'll, we'll insert dash rendar more into the shadows of the empire story like we did with hoth you know hoth isn't mentioned in in the book of the comic and dash rendar is barely a character in those i mean he is and he isn't but it feels like uh for sure back then the canon timeline was kind of just like whatever like yeah well they were it, it's they not were as strict as it is now they were getting their footing because in 91 right. when heir to the empire came out that was like a reset a resetting of canon because they they deleted like splinter the mind's eye and those like 80s and 70s marvel star wars comics that they had made um they struck them from the canon they reset everything um and the first thing that they did was heir to the empire and then they were starting to like they were starting to come into their own and discover like, okay, we should set up like a timeline for these things and we should keep things relatively consistent instead of just making stories. Um, so Shadows of the Empire is kind of like a product of the reinv reinvigoration of Star Wars from Heir to the Empire in the 90s. Uh, five years after, you know, five years into the expanded universe and we're getting like this first large scale project that Lucasfilm was willing to do. They used to call it a movie without a movie hmm. because it literally had everything else. Um, and th I think that's, what's really capturing this for me. It's the movie without a movie, this like experimentation of like, how are we going to do this expanded universe? We've made some books, but let's try to like, let's try to like reach out and like flesh out the universe and give other creators a chance to like play with star Wars. And it's like George Lucas saw shadows of the empire uh you know and and put like references and easter eggs into his movies you know he put the outrider in the special edition of a new hope you know we see the outrider right. take off from most Eisley. um he puts prince Jesus in uh phantom menace. phantom menace so you know he saw these and he thought enough to like connect put little you know connective tissue in, in there to be like okay yeah sure I'll, I'll reference this so shadows of the empire i think was like the first i mean people credit the thrawn trilogy and i do too for starting the whole thing. But I think Shadows of the Empire is like the solidification of the EU. Like it's, that's it. You know, this is like, 
big time. They sold yeah. toys for this, for crying out loud. Which That's I'm another looking thing for. <laughs> I haven't mentioned is that it's not just the book, the comics, the game, and the soundtrack. It's the toys. They made toys for something that wasn't even, you know, a movie. I mean, that's, we take that for granted now, I guess, because we get like, you know, show, we get Clone Wars figures now, like up the wazoo. Yeah. Um, but back then, you know, if it wasn't a movie, you weren't getting a toy of it, but all of a sudden we get like crew cut. Lucasfilm, and... uh, if you're listening, and I know you are, mm -hmm. please make High Republic figures. High Republic toys. I mean, again. Three inch figure, three inch High Republic toys. That's what I want. That might be another thing that's like drawing me to Shadows of the Empire is just how, like as a multimedia project, how just encompassing it is and how I want that for the High Republic right now so bad. Right. Brown Wampas? <laughs> Wampas. The Cliff Wampas. Shame on you. If you if you play these games and you kill any of the wildlife, no, shame no. on you. Shame on I you. I believe it's just like two Wampas at the beginning and then a brown sand Wampa. It's Cliff Wampa. Are, they're, but I think... I think Alex said said they were uh, sand wampas. Yeah, on Wikipedia it says cliff wampas, but does it? Cliff who wampa? am I? Who am I to? Alex I versus Wikipedia. Alex I mean, that's yeah, no, I can't. that's something. So I mean, and apparently they were like bioengineered. Yeah, I don't know the story about that, so I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna yeah, challenge. That's that. all I know. That's as far as I know. But that's interesting. Bioengineered. We found a we found this wampa just chilling in a cave. And we we're like, the wampas holy crap. Great. It was if Bigfoot. You, oh my god, it's so funny. They follow you around, but they're so slow. But they're your friends. They they kill the, the stormtroopers and whatnot. Yeah. So. Literally, the first time we encountered a Wampa, we had him follow us through the entire level. It yeah. was in Hoth, so we could see, because everything was white. We tried to get him on our ship at the end, but he oh wouldn't come. Oh my god, he wouldn't come on the ship. I was so pissed. He would cl crawl over the, the ramp, but he wouldn't come on the ship. Yeah. And we, had, we had to let him go. We had to say goodbye. And that was sad. It really was. It was a sad moment. Probably the saddest I've been playing this game um probably i've been sad for other i've been mad okay, there's been, been so many mad. emotions there's been a lot of emotions in this game i've gone through sadness with the wampa mm -hmm. i've gone through anger with the everything the I darkness and whatnot yeah, the darkness and the dying on the end boss i went through fear because in the sewers in video games i've all i guess in real life too i like the water for the most part i like pools I don't love going in the ocean and we live on the ocean. So that's kind of an issue, I guess, but I haven't been in the ocean in quite some time. So there's that, but things underwater, especially in video games, if you have to fight stuff underwater, I'm like, crap, whether it's tomb Raider or whatever it is, you know, you're going underwater and there's some like beast under there. I get terrified because I don't know. They can, they swim better than, than it, our character does all the time. And I'm like, I don't want to do this. They're, they're slimy and they're scary. What, is, what come he's out of referencing nowhere. is that there's a in the sewers there's a, a the well, boss a, is a giant a Dianoga. And along the way, I think and I was more scared Dianogas. of the other Dianoga. And th those things, those things are fast. They'll come in. They at are. You. They, yeah, and they growl at you. And the giant one was the first time I landed in that thing. I was like, I was like screaming. I'm pretty sure. Oh I'm like, God. no, dude. We were. It was like 3 a.m. Everybody had gone to bed. Shelby and, and Jamie were in bed, and we're sitting. We have a panel the next like, morning. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, we stayed up way too late before the panel. That was such a mistake, but that was I great. Know. That was perfect. It worked out. We do these things. This is the second time we've done this. When we did Star Wars Celebration, we became like so obsessed with the Phantom Menace. We had just like on night one, we sat down, we watched the Phantom Menace, and it was like a it was just like a transcendent experience where we just had like a blast. We're like, oh my god, Phantom Menace is like the best Star Wars ever. And now we're doing it again with Shadows of the Empire. Like first night. After because I, I stayed late nineties early well yeah. late nineties because Phantom Menace was, was ninety nine so you know, there it is. we we're playing Shadows of the Empire the night before the uh, the panel we do the panel we get home from Fan Expo and we get jump right back into playing Shadows of the Empire for like the rest nobody of the else day. wants to look at it or nobody play else. It, and we're just like come on we're both thinking of it the whole time Jamie's sweating. like doing her own thing Shelby's in the corner editing our video and we're sitting there just like glued to a black screen to a black screen. <laughs> playing Let's, shadows of the empire it was great it was <laughs> jamming out to the soundtrack yeah oh. it, it's funny like you know both of us both of us don't really love a lot about legends you know a lot more than i do about legend stuff um i never like i was i was always like a huge star wars fan when i was a kid but i always i think i had a chip on my shoulder for legends just because it was so expansive and i was so late to the party that I just yeah. felt like I couldn't really dive in. And I know I could have with like the, the, the main stories that people always recommend, like Heir to the Empire and stuff. But I yeah. just never I never felt the need to. 
I always just went on Wikipedia and looked up anything I needed to know, um, which is you know, not great. I did that for, for Indiana Jones. I read like a lot of the expanded adventures as they were called, which is basically like the Indiana Jones EU. I have like all of those books and I read most of them on like my bookshelf, but I have nothing for Star Wars and Star Wars is like my main thing. So once the new canon came along and like Legends was made Legends and the EU was wiped, I felt almost free. I hate to say that, but I felt no, like it was yeah, like, yeah, all right, yeah. it's my opportunity to like consume everything and to like keep track of everything and along the way so that I never like fall behind. Even if I'm not reading everything, I know everything because I'm like, you know, I'm in, I'm in the fandom while it's going on and everybody's talking about these things around me. So I'm mitosis as it were, or osmosis, <laughs> I should say. Mitosis is splitting them too. Osmosis is absorbing everything around me. Um, I think it was just really fun to like, you can go and look up these pieces of legends and whatever, but to have the experience yeah. of doing this together and whatnot, it's, it's nice to have that little thing bottled away, I guess. Is that, I don't know. Cause bottled it's not, uh, yeah. I, Cause it's not like a Canon thing. I know people can get touchy about that stuff, but uh, it's our, we have our own experience with this that we can always talk about. And that's fun. Like the that's, way, yeah. that's what the Star way. Wars should be with these things. The way I consume Legends material is what I said earlier about Shadows of the Empire. It's like a vibe. It's like a mood. Yeah. Like I just like I'm able to separate it from canon and just dive right in and just feel like it just have like emotions about it. I don't need to like study it and understand. I exactly. Really do, but I don't need to like sit down and like pay super close attention to things and references to other things and connections. I'm just sitting down and going, holy crap, 90 Star Wars. We're playing an N64 Star Wars game. You know, this soundtrack is amazing. Purple. It's like, those are the, those are the like thoughts that are running through my head. And I, you know, I could just transport myself back to like the fandom in the nineties. Another thing, like I, I always love Clark's, the movie Clark's when they're talking oh, about yeah, like, yeah. the second Death Star and they're playing that Chewy song, the Chewbacca right. song. I love that song. Oh my God. But in that, in my opinion, also encompasses like nineties Star Wars and like the nineties Star Wars fandom. I love it. Yeah, no, I mean, you nailed it. It's uh, that's a good way to feel about it. And I think you and I agree that we're going to try to play more of these yeah. Legends 90s uh, we have Star Rogue Wars Squadron. games. Yeah, uh, we got Rogue Squadron to so we're do. We're definitely going to play at least that, if not the trilogy, before the new movie comes out. Um, yeah. And it's funny because... The Cal Katarn games, we're going to play those. We're going to try, gonna try to play as many as them. Dark as we Forces, can. because we have, we have a PS2, my PS2, so we're going to play Dark Forces. We'll talk about that probably. Um, it's funny, Rogue Squadron is based on Shadows of the Empire. Shadows of the, Shadows of the Empire went and did like a bunch of things. They literally gave the developers the code for the Hoth level to be to like adapt Yeah, that's so cool you told me that. Yeah, right? And then they went and did Rogue Squadron. And I think that's so cool uh, that we literally bought these like two games that were like literally tied like, together. Yeah, and they're like the same and, like, couple years uh, built off of each other. A couple years apart, maybe. Yeah. But let's. um. We keep these mini podcast episodes a little bit short. They're not like the full hour that we usually aim for, but let's hear your radical Boba Fett All right, my Shadow radical. of the Empire thing. Here we go. You ready for this? This is radical. Uh, I don't really think this is going to happen, nor do I want it to happen. This is more of like <laughs> a I can dream situation. Um, the Book of Boba Fett talks about... There, there's like rumors that the Book of Boba Fett is going to be told in two parts. It's like the current day and then flashbacks to post Empire Strikes Back. Um, and my idea is Filoni and Favreau love to seemingly love to adapt things from legends. They're currently working on like a soft Thrawn, you know, showdown, the same as like heir to the empire. I'm wondering if book of Boba Fett is going to use those flashbacks to kind of adapt a shadows of the empire esque story hmm. out of what we have for where the bounty hunters where the bounty hunters is what we have right now in Canon for that time period. Um, it's like if you read the Boba Fett comics if for Shadows of the Empire and then read like War of the Bounty Hunters, they're almost the same thing for the some of it. I mean, there's obviously we have canon characters that we don't have in Shadows of the Empire coming in, like spoiler alert, Kira and such. But the basic right. premise of Boba Fett fighting a bunch of um, bounty hunters who are trying to get Han Solo from him st it stays in both me in both timelines. They're the same that concept is the same. So I think 
that John and Dave could theoretically go back if he, because it's supposed to be like a revenge plot, right? So if we're getting flashbacks to post Empire Strikes Back, they could easily adapt things from Shadows of the Empire and not step on War of the Bounty Hunter's toes at all. Because again, the concepts are the same thing. So we could have him, you know, getting revenge on people who are trying to steal Han Solo from him. Of course, we don't know how War of the Bounty Hunters ends yet. Uh, when does that end? When does the War of the Bounty Hunters end? Yeah. Like, in real life? Um, I think this fall, like November, yeah, like maybe? November, October, November. So yeah. like right and before Crimson Rain will happen. happen. Yeah. So we'll have that story told. Yeah, and then Crimson Rain will happen. But that that can be told down the line. Um but my radical theory is that they start adapting Shadows of the Empire into Boba Fett's flashbacks in Book of Boba Fett. And we might see, you know, him getting revenge on maybe Dash Rendar or... That would be great. Or Imagine we, having we see like live action Devil Lump Pop. Cheezor. Oh, that'd be cool too. And that's another thing I talked about earlier. Devil Lump Pop is clearly like an adaptation of like 80s Star Wars with her 80s look. And, you know, we always talk about Star Wars as if it's like this you know, separate thing, but it's their 80s movies, yeah. two of them at least. But I want I want some adaptation of 90s Star Wars in canon. I want some 90s looks. I want some, you know, some 90s feelings. Uh, War of the Bounty Hunters is doing a pretty good job of that so far, um, just because it feels so much like Shadows of the Empire in some respects. But bring, give me some like, uh, you know, ramen haired dudes with <laughs> earrings and uh, five o'clock shadow. Like, come on, like break out, break out some 90s styles, give some characters some distinctly 90s looks. You even get like the, I think you get the 80s feel in like Mandalorian as well. And a lot of the merch that they push yeah. out for Mandalorian. Like, have you seen my Cobb Vance shirt with the yeah. giant head? And like, that looks very 80s, I guess. Um, and even just like, remember in season one, him and Queel, like, it was like a montage of them rebuilding the Razor Crest. That felt yeah. like very 80s action movie. So you're right. I mean, um, maybe Book of Boba, it should feel 90s, like a little more like punkish or something. Because that's when Boba Fett shined in the 90s. He did not shine in the 80s. He did not shine in the 70s when he was introduced in 78. No. Um, <laughs> no. He shined in the 90s. Like that's when you have like all those comics and Shadows of the Empire and, you know, Boba Fett coming back from the dead again a concept that was introduced in the 90s so yeah and Robert Rodriguez is very 90s very 90s know him. very campy very uh you know just very over the I mean even look at the episode he directed the tragedy in in the Mandalorian that's very over the top very 90s yeah uh, in my opinion like that action scene is filmed very 90s i keep saying 90s i'm trying to find a, like a synonym for that but i can't i know it's, it's hard uh, to just say oh it feels 90s without describing it it's, it's I know. hard to describe it's just hard to, it's, it's like, like describing like it's, it's the force mood. it's a yeah. feeling it is it's just a feeling it's an instinct so book of boba fett <clears throat> so book of boba fett <laughs> if you could give me that that'd be nice if you could yeah, do some flashbacks adapt shadows of the empire a little bit Give us like a more '90s feel to for Boba Fett and all that. I'll be a super happy boy. I um I could see it happening, like a little bit, a little sprinkle. Yeah. Um, like I don't know if we see like Dash Rendar or anything, but we'll see. For the love um, of God, put Shizor in War of the Bounty Hunters and or Lebo. Crimson Rain or any of these comics that take place. Just put him in one story taking place after after Empire and before Return of the Jedi. Just one story. Just give us like a little taste. They'll have to tone him down a little, I think. Yeah, keep the pheromone stuff out of yeah, it. Keep and keep out. his like sexy assassin droid that he does things yeah. with. He, keep her out, out too. Um, <laughs> or just change their relationship to platonic. That'd be nice. Yeah. Um, we've seen we Shang Chi or Shang Chi uh, does a very good like male female best friend platonic relationship. Let's do that. Let's do that uh, for Prince or and uh, his bang droid, whatever we call it. Um, <laughs> I'm down for that. But uh any final words on Shadows of the Empire for now? It's purple. I guess purple. It's purple. purple. No, it's it's so good. It's just like a blast. If you're ever in the mood, if you're ever like just hungry blast for Rendar. Like, blast Rendar. Yeah. <laughs> Trash Rendar. You gotta you gotta make that. Um I do. No, if you're ever in the mood for if for some Star Wars, if you're just hungry for for like some classic Star Wars, but you've watched the movies like 10 billion times and you want something else in that 
time period pick up shadows of the empire i don't know play the game you know because we did that's that's what this is about um but yeah at least listen to the soundtrack sit back on, on youtube listen to the soundtrack and just yeah get lost yeah. go back to the 90s there you have it guys we'll um we'll have more of these we'll have more of these mini things i don't know what else we'll talk about more old video games and stuff like that but yeah we'll see you guys next time <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>